Hi there, Simon Stokes from Subsign Academy here. In this video, let's take a little look at something a wee bit different. We'll keep doing some sound design. Let's look at a classic kind of sound from Mr. Fingers track. So let's just play that track first of all so you can hear it. Okay, so what I've done is I've programmed, I mean, we're just going for rough here. I'm not, we're not going to exactly recreate the track or anything like that. I just wanted to show you that the sounds in it are not exactly complicated sounds that are out with your reach. Um, so first of all, we've just got a 909 kit with some of the drums. Just run them through a bit of saturator. That just dirties them up a little bit. And a bit of a compressor, which just kind of squashes things a little bit. We'll talk about them a wee bit later on. And I've made up the parts here. I'm not going to show you how to work those out. You can just kind of get into that yourself. But basically, um, if we put on analog, solo out. I've got roughly the right notes. Maybe we come to the amp section and shorten the release a bit. Let's just make this full screen. You know, you could filter, play around with the filter a bit. But really the tone of this sound comes from a square wave. So let's change it to that. Nice high pulse width again. And let's, it's just too high right now. Let's drop it down a couple of octaves. See, now we're starting to get a bit closer to the actual sound. And if we filter it down, maybe give it a little more envelope. Then we've almost got the sound that we're looking for there. All we have to do is add a little bit of something called chorus to it. And chorus is just a nice effect that was featured in some of Roland's old synthesizers that just let you add a bit of texture, add a bit of modulation, a bit of movement to your sounds. And you see, as soon as you add that, you just get that nice, round, warm. And you know, that is one of house music's all-time classic bass lines. It's only three notes. You know, you don't need to know much more than that. <laughs> Let's have a wee look at the pads. And um, pads are a little more complicated, but I've just got the notes out. I'm going to share this project with you so you can have a play with it yourself. But again, you know, created still using those old Roland analog synthesizers. So let's just put analog onto here. And we've got the chords, which are lovely. And maybe if you didn't make them sine waves or something like that, if we just kept this as a sawtooth wave, this might be quite a nice sort of Detroity. Detroity thing going on, and maybe a bit of. A little bit of filter envelope. See how we're getting some. Just make it a little more gentle. Do you hear the movement you get? We've turned that into a lovely kind of stringy pad type sound. Just by tweaking the filter envelope a little bit. You know, for our own twist on this track. Sounds pretty nice. I mean, it's not what I'm going for, though, to be honest. So let's just um, bring this back to how it was. What we're looking for for the pads is a nice sine wave. And you see that gives you that kind of organy type sound. And 
we're almost there let's solo it out now at the moment we've just got one layer of sound here we've got a single oscillator going into the filter going into the amp envelope and then out the end of the synthesizer now what if we were to add a second oscillator to it if we stick on the second oscillator now i can choose the same or a different waveform to play on top of that both of these, you see this F1, F2, both of these are then getting sent into filter one and into amp envelope one and out. Now we could route this one into filter two, if I brought it down to the bottom and it would go into filter two and then amp two, which is a separate envelope and then out. So you could create more complex sounds that way. We're not gonna go too deep into that just now, I think. I'm gonna bring this up to filter one. So these are both sort of combining forces and running into here. And this just lets you sort of thicken up the sound because if you think about it, if I play my chords right now, I'm getting them played on a sine wave and then we're adding a sawtooth wave on top or another sine wave on top if we really want. And there's a few different things we can do here. You know, we can make these, at the moment, they're both the exact same sine wave playing on top of each other, which is nice, but it just increases the volume. It doesn't like do anything nice tonally to the sound. But if I was to detune one of them a little bit, do you hear what happens now? They like shimmer off of each other. This is one of the beautiful things about synthesizers just being able to detune two oscillators if they're both exactly the same both sine wave both the same octave and semitone and you detune one a little bit or you detune them both in different directions you get this lovely shimmering kind of sound when it's a sine wave let's go back to one oscillator now do you hear why modulation is important Let's add it back in. Now, without any effects, we've got this lovely like shimmering thing going on. Really, really nice. So that's one thing we could do. And that works no matter what oscillator you type you choose. If we choose a sawtooth wave, as long as they're both the same and we detune them, you're getting this really thick sound instead of a really thin sound. Okay, now we add the second oscillator. If you push it too far, it will get all horribly out of tune. So just don't go too far from each other. Maximum of 0.2 of a semitone, I would say, when you combine both of them together. We could also unison that bad boy up. If we unison it up, remember we're taking the whole synthesizer, multiplying it by two, so that gives us a four oscillator synthesizer, and then we can detune those bad boys all against each other. And do you see how now we're starting to get kind of strings sounding? If you compare that to just this. Sounds shit. Add this. Mmm, sounds a bit better. Add this. Oh yeah. Now we're starting to get kind of thick, lush strings. What about if we had doubled it again, put it up to eight? Oh, we need more voices for this bad boy. Oof. Whoa, that is nice. Let's put reverb on that. do that all day now if we take off the unison and the oscillator you hear how we're back to a thin sound a lot less interesting on the ears than a nice fat so in synthesis using detune to take two oscillators three oscillators four oscillators and pull them apart from each other and create thicker sounds is a really popular thing. In fact, it's how Moogs, or Moogs as they're correctly pronounced apparently, um, create their massive sounding bass and lead lines is using um, really nicely detuned oscillators. So that's one thing you can do with multiple oscillators. What about if we just took, put them back to how they were before. So now they're just your plain old 
plain old synchronized oscillators. Let's make them sine waves. So let's go to the top one. And this time we'll take one of them and move it an octave up. That's nice. That's giving us that kind of organy kind of sound. We can change the levels of them here. Play with that. Bit of chorus again. Oh, see how that chorus just turns it into a nice kind of pad like sound. Get a bit too excited in this video. But it's just simple things like that that can just make things sound nice. Drop the beat. probably got that vocal in here have I fingers let's have a quick look yeah oh god not a short dick man that's a bad one <laughs> there we go <laughs> And that's enough of that, but you get the idea. So really, I'll share this project with you so that you've got these parts um, and you can have a replay around with them and stuff. But I want you to maybe bring up the project, delete the analogs out of it and um, try remaking them yourself because it's really, really simple to do. Um, once And once you start to be able to listen to sounds that you love and break them down into their constituent parts and understand how they're put together, that's when you start to unlock the mysteries of music and that it's not as difficult as all that and when you break it down a lot of sounds that you've heard in your lifetime electronic music sounds come from similar sources so um that's what i want you to start thinking about and have a wee look so um play around with this a little bit and then move on to the next video <laughs>